that is in the news a lot these days, which is the, the trade war between the U.S. and China. We know that President Trump really likes tariffs. He tells us all the time on Twitter. Not only does he like it, he also has implemented lots and lots of tariffs over the last uh, 13 months, actually. And uh, so I just want to ask this question, are tariffs on Chinese imports a good idea? And obviously, uh, as economists, uh, you probably could agree with me that they are not, in general, a good idea. However, I, I wanted to just think a little bit, uh, give the administration the benefit of the doubt, and maybe just think of, is there any way to explain what is going on right now? So that's what I wanted to just think about a little bit. Because we know, in international trade theory, there are some very specific circumstances under which a tariff <coughs> is, in fact, a good idea. So do they apply uh, to what's going on right now? And this is just why they're not a good idea. If we live in a perfect world, where all countries are small, there are no market failures, and all markets are competitive, no, they're not a good idea. There's going to be a deadweight loss. We're not allocating our resources efficiently. But in national income accounting identity, we know that when we do reduce imports, we also reduce exports. So we should not do it in that world. But we also know that we don't live in that world. We live in a world where there are all kinds of market failures. So uh, we want to maybe just try to incorporate that a little bit. When I look at what the, the administration has said, Britain, there are really six arguments for why the, the tariffs are taking place. The first one is, of course, and uh, President Trump has been saying this for, for a couple of many years, actually, we need to protect the U.S. industries and jobs. The second one is that trade deficits are just bad. Uh, we need safeguard <coughs> tariffs is gonna, has been used national security, unfair trade practices, and then finally, the last uh, argument that's being used right now is that tariffs is a negotiation tactic. Let me just go through these uh, just quickly in turn. <coughs> it is of course true that any policy, whether it's a, a trade policy or a domestic policy, will create both winners and losers. Uh, it's, this is not really an economic argument, therefore, because whenever you do some policy, there will be some groups that win and some groups that lose, but it's very hard to pick which one should be, you know, who are you going to pick as being the winner? And it is, uh, of course, uh, possible that people working in the coal industry, in the steel industry, in the aluminum industry, in the washing machine industry, in the solar panel industry, Maybe they deserve some protection for some reason, but uh, as an economist, we cannot answer that question. That's a political question, and uh, you know, I, I can't really answer it. But the more, uh, more relevant question is, why should we protect some people and not others? And those are the ones I wanna just focus a little bit on. Uh, this one is the easy one. Are trade deficits bad? Uh, no, they're not. So uh, it is true that we have a massive, bu massive bilateral trade deficit with China. It's actually higher in 2018 than it was in 2017, which says something because all through 2018 we're putting tariffs on imports. Which, if you believe, if, it, uh, if Trump was right, then that would have reduced the trade deficit. Uh, I just read uh, a couple of days ago. Janet Yellen, Yellen in the, you know, the former Fed chair, uh, arguing that there is no real meaning to bilateral trade deficits, and I think all of us will agree with that, and it's not an appropriate objective of policy, so we shouldn't even think about it. Uh, nevertheless, that is something that Donald Trump has uh, certainly emphasized a lot. So let me just... Uh, go into the, the three battles that, that has been fought over imports over the last 13 months. It started uh, in January 2018. The decision was made earlier, but they implemented it in January 2018 when uh, we put tariffs on washing machines and solar components, solar panels. Uh, it's worth knowing that this was uh, uh, justified legally 
to satisfy the World Trade Organization's rules as safeguard tariffs, which means that the, the administration made an argument that all these imports of washing machines and solar panels are hurting substantially the production of domestic producers of washing machines and solar panels. Uh, Whirlpool and Benton Harbor was the one who asked for those uh, protections. It feels to me that these uh, kind of things are probably more about you know, protecting certain industry and jobs than maybe a good, a good idea in terms of what's good for the country. Nevertheless, we could try to make an argument like this if we have a market failure. Uh, one could try to make an argument that the production of washing machines, maybe the use of washing machines, are creating some positive externality and therefore it's very important to have washing machine production in the US. <coughs> Although I think it would be a bit of a stretch to make that argument. In fact, it's probably more true that uh, when you put a tariff on solar panels, you're making solar panels more expensive and therefore consumers will not buy as many or install as many and therefore they will use fossil fuels instead so there's probably a negative externality of anything. So I would say that the solar panels had probably both <coughs> a distortionary cost because of the tariff and there's a negative externality associated with not having solar panels being installed. So we actually made the country and the world worse off. So this would not be, in my opinion, a very good argument. What about uh, national security? And that was the second bat battle. Uh, the argument was that there's a lot of excess capacity in terms of steel and aluminum in the world. Therefore, the price of steel and aluminum is very low, and therefore US producers are going out of business. They cannot compete. And then the national security argument is, of course, that if we don't produce steel and aluminum, how can we possibly fight a war because we couldn't produce you know, weapons? And uh, therefore, we need to protect the steel and aluminum industry, and that's what uh, they did. 25% uh, tariffs on steel, 10% on aluminum. It's not a very good argument, though. Uh, although, I mean, it's a valid, in fact, it is one of only three valid uh, arguments for protectionism. But I think they really uh, diluted that argument when they put the tariffs on all our allies as well. Canada, European countries, South Korea, and that made the argument very weak. Also, steel and aluminum, there are lots of uh, metals that are very important for, for modern warfare, and they did not put any tariffs on those rear metals and so forth. So again, going very quickly here, a weak argument. So now we're getting into the, the meat of the, of, the, of the problem and the trade war, which is that China might be using unfair trade practices, especially when it comes to intellectual property, technology transfer, and any kind of like innovation policies. Uh, when it comes down to it, this is probably the, the main uh, concern that people have in the US. It's also the main concern that economists would have when it comes to China and trading with China. Uh, it is true that China has policies that force uh, firms that want to invest in China to uh, sign agreements that transfer some of the technology to the, to the domestic uh, partners. Uh, it's also true that there has been cases of intellectual property theft in China. So this is a real concern, but it didn't really come to a point until uh, in 2015 China uh, adopted their Made in China 2025 framework where they, and this was probably a mistake, where they explicitly said that we are going to overtake the US in terms of advanced manufacturing. Clearly that put the US on edge and instead of uh, realizing that you know having a, a wealthy China could be good for the US in terms of our economy, uh, ever since then, they have been pushing against China, trying to bring China down. Is there any way we can contain China? And the import tariffs have been a way to, 
to contain China, especially in the Made in China 2025 policy. Uh, it hasn't been working very well, of course, because China has retaliated. Whenever we put a tariff on their goods, they have retaliated and putting tariffs on our goods. Uh, but there are some <coughs> languages, you know, in the Made in China, they have, uh, they have toned it down a little bit. So there is some movement. Just in the last couple of days, of course, uh, Larry Kudlov come out saying that we're having fantastic talks and they're going really, really well. And China is, is getting, you know, reducing their, their tariffs on U.S. soybeans and beef. Uh, I'm not as optimistic. Of course, they, they raised the tariffs on soybeans and beef and now they're just bringing them back to what they were before, so it's not really a win. Nevertheless, these are uh, some interesting things. And, and they make sense. In economics, they make sense. Uh, advanced manufacturing probably has some positive externalities or so. There's probably some technology spillovers that we can take advantage of if we have advanced manufacturing. China has been incredibly successful in uh, basic producing and exporting basic consumer goods, clothing, shoes, basic consumer electronics, and that has brought them to middle income status. But if they want to become a high income country, they probably have to transition to, uh, to advanced manufacturing. So it's gonna be very hard for, uh, for us to convince them not to do that, because it is in fact a good argument for China to pursue these policies. Is it a good argument for the US to try to stop China from doing it? Well, if you're right that uh, advanced manufacturing has positive externalities, if that, those industries are being transferred to China, that will hurt America. So there is some reason for why uh, we should perhaps try to work with or contain China in some way. And that uh, gets us to the the third argument, which is the big one here, which is that tariffs are just a negotiating tactic. Everything we've done so far was just part of a big plan. It didn't start out as a big plan, but now it is. Uh, of course, there are some significant uh, cost associated with the, the plan, which is that, you know, initially, uh, this trade war is making everybody worse off. But in terms of negotiation, the, the argument is that these temporary costs will be outweighed by the permanent benefit that we'll get, get when China changes their behavior. The question then is, will China change their behavior? It seems unlikely to me that they will significantly change their behavior. Of course, everything they've done so far has been to retaliate, so that says that they will not do what we want them to do. They have, you know, just moved a little bit, but probably just to make sure that the, you know, the administration stays happy and does not increase their tariffs, which is, which worked last Sunday when they postponed the March 1, today's increase. Uh, there is some change in the Made in China 2025 policies, but not substantial, just in language, not in anything. And given that this is so important for the Chinese industrial policy, I don't think they will ever change that policy. I don't think there's anything the U.S. can do, especially since uh, uh, Chinese exports that goes to the U.S. is actually less than 20% of total Chinese exports. We are actually not a very big market, or it's not the major market for, for Chinese uh, export. Since uh, we are out of time, I'm just going to stop right here, but obviously it is too early to tell. They're still negotiating as we speak right now, but I think this is an interesting uh, topic to think about in terms of understanding what's going on in the news right now. Thank you. Okay, we'll take uh, just one question, one short question. Go ahead. Please. Yeah, as a freedom of I say if the Chinese government wants to rob their taxpayers to give us things below cost, I'm fine with it. But uh, is there a better way for the government to go after the Chinese stealing of American property, intellectual property, other than a tariff? What would be the best yes. thing? I agree with you. Usually, uh, when they subsidize their goods, we should be happy about it. But that breaks down when there are positive externalities with the domestic production. So that's the only time when that would not hold. I would say that if you have a problem, you should always address it at its source. So if, they, if what we're really facing is an investment problem, we should solve it with investment policies or policies on investment. <laughs> so I think the best way would probably be to, uh, instead of restricting or putting tariffs on Chinese imports, 
maybe restricting Chinese investment in the U.S. might make them realize what's going on in a better or more efficient way. That's what that would be my answer. Thank you. Thank you.